All right, welcome back. You know, I promise I'm not looking for trouble, but it's getting harder and harder for me to get excited about these stocks, right? After these latest gains, whew, boy, oh boy, record high after record high. Now, today, we may be seeing a little dose of reality when it comes to equity prices. We just went through them at the end of the last segment. But that, that magnificent, magnificent seven, uh, they've ruled pretty much going back to the beginning of last year. Is tech, specifically artificial intelligence, getting a little long in the tooth? Uh, could the fast successes that they've had be a little disconcerting? Well, the stock market is flashing the same warning signs of speculative mania that preceded the crashes of 2008 and 2000, according to economist David Rosenberg. The Rosenberg Research in, uh, president, he said uh, he called the 2008 recession and has been a vocal bear on Wall Street amid the latest market rally. Now, he pointed to the raging bull market that's taken off in stocks with the S&P, the S&P 500. They surpassed that 5,000 mark for the first time ever in the history of that market last week. Now, the benchmark index, it soared 22% from its low in October last year, clearing the official threshold for a quote-unquote bull market. Now, the index has also gained for the last five weeks and has been up for the past 14 in the past 15 weeks. A lot of numbers there, but listen to them. A winning streak that hasn't been seen since the early 1970s. Now, what's an investor to do with these headlines, right? Are there any obvious danger signs that we should be looking out for? Well, my next guest deals in this stuff every single day. Please welcome to the show, founder and CEO of the Wealth Manager Group in Chicago. That's Craig Bolanos. Craig, thanks for being on. You got to admit, I mean, this, it's hard to plow money in when you keep setting record high after record high. What do you, what do you say? Well, remember, Scott, new highs tend to make new highs. I don't want to be dismissive about the price action today, but I think if someone is comparing right now where we are in February of 24 to the pinnacle of the dot-com bubble, March of 2000, I think there's a couple reasons that there's some similarity, but there are not definitive parallels. This is not the end of the dot-com bubble part two. We're just not there. All right, so we've got investors out there uh, that watch the show. They may have some extra cash around. They like to invest. We've been talking about the magnificent seven tech stocks, so those AI stocks. Uh, some folks have said that it's only magnificent five now. I don't know. But um, where do you stand on the length? I mean, if it's a nine-inning ball game, where are we with investing in AI? What inning? Ooh, specifically investing in AI I have to be sincere. I think this is just the tip of the iceberg, just like I think it's the tip of the iceberg in a number of places. But I want to make sure my first comments were measured, Scott. The reason I said this doesn't look like the dot-com bubble part number two is let's go back to history. You lived it. I was there. The PE of the NASDAQ 100 back then was 60.1 times earnings. The PE of the NASDAQ 100 today is nowhere near 60.1 times earnings. Part number two, going into the dot-com bubble, you had mass amounts of record fund flows into equities. Let's look at what's happened. Investors yanked out $54 billion from stock funds in 2022, another $137 billion last year. That doesn't look like the same thing. And part number three, the IPO space, there's not that many technology IPOs. In fact, the new tech IPOs we've had, they've been from companies that are much more established versus those that are new. So I don't think this is the beginning of the end part number two and i honestly think we're only in the second or third inning of this entire movement in ai it's a long-term investable disruption theme because disruption comes from innovation and that's an investable statistic or ideology for most people okay you brought it up i'm gonna i'm gonna follow up nasdaq was up 60 times that was what the, the value was 60 times earnings back in the dot com what's that's from march of 2000 i think you said right Yep, 60.1 to be specific. Yep. That makes me feel a little bit better about NVIDIA's. I think NVIDIA's around 30 times earnings, and that thing's blown the top off of everything. Is that right, or am I wrong on that? NVIDIA. No, I think you're wrong on that. I thought NVIDIA was trading at something like 94, 95 uh, times think... tra trailing earnings. Maybe I'm wrong. But if you look at the other names, the Mr. Softies, Microsoft, you look at Amazon, you look at all these companies in the cloud storage, the valuations aren't unreasonable because the companies actually make money. And I'm specifically focusing here in the NASDAQ 100, that technology cap-weighted domiciled indice. Again, 60 times earnings versus 31 times right now, that's half. Right. So we're nowhere near. It doesn't mean we're not going to be there. It just means we're not there now. And you glossed over, but you said something very, very important there. These companies are actually making money. 
Back in the dot-com era, you just had to put dot-com at the end of your, your company name and not even having any revenues. So you're, you're losing money. Look, I mean, even, even Amazon lost money for a ton of years before they finally turned the corner. This is, you're right, I think that that's a really good reason to argue that this is not the dot-com bubble because these companies are actually still make, or no, they started off actually making money. They have positive revenue flow, right? Yes, that's exactly it. I mean, and I think that's part of the reason <clears throat> investors are different today than they were. I mean, a lot of people who are investing now were investing back then. And as a result of that, it's going to be very hard for us to replicate the dot-com bubble. Now, once everyone our age, Scott, I'm dating us, is dead, oh, the bubble will come and happen again because people won't learn from the sins of the past. But it's for those reasons that it's too premature to make that comparison. And we need to look at it through that lens of profitability and earnings. That's the story to be told. And so putting on your positive hat is you're telling me that days like today are opportunities. They aren't any reason to run for the door. Yeah, today is not a day to run for the door, but I don't even know that today is the day to put a lot of capital to work. I think we've been long overdue for what would be easily a 5 to 10% air pocket in right. cap-weighted indices. Again, I said cap-weighted indices. So what what you call it, like feathering? What, what do you always yeah, like feather, to do? Yeah, feather your bids in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fe feather it in. Yeah, that's probably the type of thing that someone should start getting started for. I mean, March of last year was terrible when the banks and uh, Credit Suisse went down. Maybe March is going to be a day of reckoning again in 2024. That's a couple weeks out. But get your shopping list together. Start putting some money in. And don't worry about the earnings. Because again, even if the consumer spends less money, the companies can cost cut by letting some of their workers go to still hit the targets. All Might right. not be the way we want to hit the bottom line numbers, but the numbers are going to get hit one way or the other. All right, from your lips to God's ears, thank you very much. I love it. I love what I hear from you. Thank you very much. Craig Bellanos, CEO and co-founder of the Wealth Managed Group in Chicago. All right, let's...